Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Juggernaut and today I want to show you how to add more RAM and by doing so improve performance in Project Zomboid. So, have you noticed that, uh, especially when you add lots of mods to the game, the game starts lagging, the FPS drops, you're getting stutters, um, I think that for me this is especially true when I start driving a car somewhere and zoom all the way out. Um, the game basically turns into a slideshow at certain points, especially if there's a lot of zombies around. So if you want to fix that, all you need to do is you need to go to your Project Zomboid installation folder in Steam. So for me that would be C, Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps Common and then Project Zomboid. For you it's most likely going to be Steam, Steam Apps Common, Project Zomboid and then depending on where you've installed Steam to, um, it could be a C drive, your D drive, you're going to need to find this. Basically, it's the folder with Project Zomboid 32 and 64.exe. In there, you're looking for one particular file, and that is this, projectzomboid.json, or .json, right? If you don't see projectzomboid.json, what you want to do is you want to go over to View, uh, Show, file name extensions. So make sure this, um, and you can also see hidden items, I think it's, it's useful if you know what you're doing with your computer, but anyways, always show file name extensions if, uh, for example, you see just Project Zomboid 64. And with this icon, and then, you know, with this icon. Uh, so if you don't see the extensions like .exe, .bat and stuff, that's what you want to do. So you want to open this file. Um, I recommend you opening it with numpad++. I think you can get away with opening it just with the regular Windows numpad, but I always recommend numpad++, it's a great program. Anyways, so we're going to double click that, we're going to open it, and it opens on the other monitor, so here you can see it. This is what you want to do, you want to go over to VMargs over here, and you're going to notice that mine looks a little bit different than yours if you open them. Um, once you open this, and if you haven't tampered with it before, what you should have here is out of these lines, only, out of these two lines, only the bottom one should exist, and it should say XMX 3072M. So it should say this and this, right? What you want to do is you want to add XMS and then put that at some value, depending on, on your computer. I'll get into that in a second. And you want to put XMX, a larger value. The top value here, XMS, means the minimum amount of RAM allocated at all times to the game. XMX is the maximum amount of RAM. If you've ever played Minecraft, you should be relatively familiar with these things as it's, as it's one of the first things you change when uh, you install the game. So Project Zomboid works in much a similar fashion. Essentially, uh, depending on how much RAM your system has, you want to allocate some more to the game. For my personal example, I have 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM, and I can easily afford to put 10 into the game. I think I'm, I'm uh, when I'm not doing much around the computer, I'm 16 to 20 gigs of RAM is just sitting idly doing absolutely nothing. So yeah, I can easily afford to put 10 into the game. So my maximum value is 10,240 and my minimum value is three gigabytes. Now, how do you, why not just 10,000 and why not just 10 gigabytes? Well, this is the way it works. I would recommend that you go to this website if you're interested. Um, it's gbmb.org, and basically you will want to put in the amount of gigabytes here, and it will give you the binary value for your uh, memory. So, anyways, once you change that, the game should perform better. I'm sorry about that. The game should perform better, and um, there you go. Now, there is one more thing. If you get a Project Zomboid update on Steam, for example, today I had, um, as you can see, a workshop content update for about 65 megabytes. Um, if you get this, sometimes the game will auto-verify the, the files, and once you open this, it's going to say XMX3072 again. So you're going to need to change it again. However, um, it doesn't often do this. When there's a big game update, it will definitely do that. Um, if there's some workshop content, sometimes it does this, sometimes it doesn't. Um, if you really want to, you can turn off updates on Steam, but I've heard from plenty of people that they would go on for a month or two without this changing, and then occasionally if you notice lag spikes and stuttering and stuff, you can go back here and, and, and check again. Um, and then that's about it, 
Alright, so let's uh, get into the game and actually check out if we've made a difference or not. Okay, and here we go, we're in game with uh, one of my characters. I'm going to try and drive around a little bit, because like I said, that's where I've noticed the performance dip the... Uh, perfor perfor blah, 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 try again. Performance dips the most. Um, but I am noticing the game's a little bit smoother in general when I'm uh, zoomed all the way out and I'm looking around. Now, to make sure this actually is working, um, what you can do is you can run the game and then go to your process manager, that's control alt delete and check how much um, RAM the game's actually using. Um, and currently, I'm looking at it on, the other, on my other monitor, uh, the game's currently using around 6 gigabytes of RAM for me. So let's... There we go, let's... Uh, drive around a little bit. He says immediately crashing into something. Okay, yeah, that is a lot smoother. Post-production juggernaut here. Um, I've done a little bit more testing between actually recording this video and now that I've gotten around to editing it, and I've noticed that if you put more RAM as the minimum uh, requirement for the game, the game actually performs a lot better and ends up using more maximum RAM. That doesn't make a lot of sense, but basically, if you put the minimum value at least in my case, at 8 gigabytes, the game will use, let's say, or 6 gigabytes, the game will use, let's say, 8, 9, 10 gigabytes of RAM, maybe, whereas if you put the minimum at 3, it will only use up to 5, even though you define the maximum at 10. Um, this is average use, right? Not not at some, not some peaks. Um, but essentially what I'm trying to get at is if you put the minimum amount of RAM higher, Overall, the performance of the game tends to get a little bit better, so what I've done for me right now is I've put the minimum at 6 and the maximum at 16. Um, and that's gotten rid of most of these micro stutters and stuff like that, and it's especially gotten rid of a small micro stutter that you get sometimes when killing zombies in a larger horde. Um, I didn't even realize it was there most of the time. Um, but now that it's gone, I realize that it was there and that there was that little sort of like um, dip in frame rate every time you kill a zombie and it falls down to the ground. Uh, it's barely noticeable, but on a high refresh rate monitor, now that it's gone, you can definitely tell that it was there. Um, so yeah, just, just try that out and uh, experiment a little bit for yourselves. But let's get over here to where there's more enemies and uh, see how it performs. Yep, that is, to me, that is a lot better. Um, generally, this fix should get rid of some of the freezes, it should improve your frame rate, um, should fix all, all sorts of things, because basically you're just allocating more resources to the game, and really, 3 gigs of VRAM for, oh sorry, 3 gigs of RAM for uh, a game like this, just, even though it is re a relatively simple game, there's a lot for it to, uh, calculate and do and stuff, there's tons of enemies, tons of items, tons of stuff. Um, three gigs just isn't enough, I feel like, especially with mods, but even in the vanilla game, this, this should improve your uh, overall experience. Yeah, to me, um, this is a lot smoother. I don't know how much it's going to come across on, on YouTube um, with the compression and with the, you know, YouTube frame rate and stuff like that. Um, I'm playing this on a 144Hz monitor. The max you can see on YouTube right now is 60 FPS, so... Um, you, you, I don't know how, how much of it you can see uh, in terms of, of improvements, but I'm telling you, it feels a heck of a lot better. But, anyways, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Like, subscribe down below if you enjoyed the video. We'll stay tuned with the rest of the content that I produce on the channel. And if you have any questions about uh, how to get this working, if you have any problems, please feel free to let me down. Uh, let me down? <laughs> Please feel free to let me know down in the comments below. Um, it doesn't completely get rid of some of the issues. For example, right there at the crossroads I had a small stutter, and I imagine part of the reason is RAM isn't the only thing responsible for um, getting rid of stutters and, and, and stuff like that. However, it is a bit of an improvement, and I think it'll... Um, it'll help a lot, especially on lower-end systems, uh, where obviously you won't be able to allocate like 20 gigs of VRAM, so, again, VRAM. Uh, you're gonna be able to allocate 20 gigs of RAM 
um, or, or something like that. But you know, any every little bit helps. If you go from three to five or three to six, um, it's still going to to uh, matter, and I think you're still going to see the difference. All right, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching. Have, uh, take care, have fun, and bye bye.